appreciate everyone's uh, attendance. We've got a full crowd, full agenda. Um, the uh, minutes were distributed and um, look good, unless there's any further questions or comments. Yeah. Oops, Seeing sir. none, I just seek a motion to. Yes, thanks, Denise. Okay. A second. Thanks, Jackie. And uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right, the uh, minutes are approved. And before we commence our uh, agenda items, uh, we certainly have recognition of uh, three employees uh, who do wonderful things for the organization on a daily basis, and we'd like to call them forward. Thank you. Yeah, first up today is Scott Markentel, who is one of our star supervisors and celebrating 20 years. So Scott is originally from Boston and settled in Lenox, Lenox, Massachusetts, where he owned a restaurant and a pizza shop. He says he loves to cook and grew up around good food. So he eventually moved to Albany and was starting his family when he saw a CDTA bus driver, a uh, bus drive by and said, hey, I could do that. So in 2004, he became a star operator. Yeah. <laughs> Much of his first year was spent learning the area, memorizing roads with paper maps and writing down directions, make sure I said on paper to get him to his customers' destinations. He said now each star operator has a digital tablet with a GPS and their daily work paddle and a lot has changed mm -hmm. over the last 20 years. After a year on the road, a supervisor position opened and he said he felt empowered to take a chance. He succeeded and has been a supervisor for the past 19 years. He says his favorite part of the job is the customers that he interacts with. He said that STAR is really a lifeline for a lot of the folks that we transport each day throughout the capital region. He says getting around the region is a big part of their independence, and he's happy to be a small part of that. One of his favorite memories at CDTA were the family trips to Great Escape in Lake George. He says you'll likely find him at this year's Boston Red Sox versus Yankees trip in the fall, and the note says maybe him and Carm can sit together at the game. <laughs> in his spare time, Scott says he likes to cook Italian and seafood cuisines are his favorite. He also says he spends the weekends with his nephews in Lenox where he's part owner of the big family house. He says he enjoys teaching his nephews how to maintain the home so he can fully pass them the baton one day. So he says retirement would be nice sooner rather than later, but he said he's going to enjoy a few more years with us here at CDTA, and we're, we're glad to hear that. Congratulations, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up is Mr. Gary Guy. Oh, yeah. Gary is our Director of Transportation, and he is celebrating 30 years with us at CDTA. So Gary's been with us for, as I said, the past 30 years and has quite literally grown up here at CDTA. Gary was introduced to CDTA by his stepfather when he was four years old. He says he remembers sitting behind the wheel of a fishbowl bus pretending to pick up passengers. His love for transportation never went away, and his family was expanding, and he joined CDTA in 1994. Gary really has a true career ladder success story. He was hired as a star driver. He moved to Fix Route in Albany and was promoted to street supervisor. 19 years ago, he was promoted to transportation superintendent. He then moved from that position to superintendent in field operations for star. After star, Gary was our Schenectady superintendent for five years and then spent two years as Albany superintendent before being promoted to his current role as director of transportation in 2021. Gary has enjoyed his time at CDTA professionally, and he's made an important personal connection as well. In 2003, Gary met the love of his life while working with her on the installation of our radio system. Mm -hmm. And that lovely lady, of course, is Terry Guy, who is our applications administrator in IT. Gary says looking back on his 30 years, he loves his job more now than he did when he walked through the front door on his first day. He says that he enjoys the stage in his career, being able to build relationships 
internally and externally. He has a passion for community service, and he was honored by the American Heart Association for being a leader of impact, raising more than $16,000 last year for the campaign. He's also a board member for Whitney Young Health Services, Schenectady Community Ministries, and he's also part of the Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity, and just found out Gary's also a, a new member of the American Heart Association Board of Directors, so congratulations. Mm -hmm. love what you do. You will never work a day in your life. And he's still sticking to his goal of reti retiring <laughs> with 40 plus years of service. So congratulations, Gary, on 30 years. All right. Well, last but certainly not least, we have a, another big one today. Um, Donald Brooks Sr. celebrating 45 years with CDTA. <laughs> Master technician in our Schenectady division. So celebrating 45 years of service is Donald Brooks Sr. or he's or as he is best known around these parts as Donnie. It's a rarity to have an employee at one organization for 45 years anymore, and we certainly appreciate your dedication and hard work over the last four plus decades. So a bit about Donnie, before joining CDTA, he worked at gas stations during high school and then as a technician at a local car dealership before making the move to CDTA at just 19 years old. He joined the CDTA family because he saw it as one of the best places to work in the capital region. Donnie started as many of our maintenance folks did as a cleaner and then moved his way through the ranks and is now a certified master technician. Donnie has been very active in the ATU 1321. He's a long serving grievance representative and is currently serving his second term as vice president. Working at CDTA has been a family affair for the Brookses. Over the years, some of his children have worked at CDTA and his brother Floyd works in the stockroom in Troy with almost 35 years of service. In his free time, he likes to hunt, camp, and check out the Demolition Derby when it's in town. He's a big country music fan who enjoys a good steak and seafood. He says he also likes to take family trips to Tennessee to see his daughter's family and the grandkids. When asked about his plans for retirement, Donnie did not come clean with us, saying he wants to spend time with his family, but it all depends on the upcoming ATU elections. <laughs> so Donnie, thank you very much. That's a hundred years, basically, give or take a couple. Um, you know, and, and I've known Donnie since I walked in the door. Uh, we kind of had this running joke as to who's going to go first. Um, we'll see. Um, you know, Scott Markintel has been one of the you know, fixtures of the star, you know, since almost, almost since the beginning. And, you know, watching Gary, um, you know, grow and mature into his diff different roles. I mean, you're talking about career ladder. I, I lose track of how many jobs people like Gary have had. I mean, you're talking tens probably, um, and you sort of take people for granted after a while. But these are the these are the people that you know hold this place up. Um, they keep it going. They keep it they keep it running. You know, they don't really ask for much. Uh, they just they just come to work every day and do their jobs. You know, without them, we're we're not we're not here celebrating success. So we really appreciate what they do. Yeah. Three great guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. terrific. Yeah. Congrats again, Gary. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, all right. So we're gonna proceed with the agenda and get into the committee reports. And I'll provide the first one on behalf of Jamie. The Board Operations Committee met on May 15th. 
there were several administrative discussion items. Uh, we reviewed agendas for the May meetings. CARM reviewed the year-end report for the CEO and company work plan. Lots of accomplishments and advancements during this year. Uh, some that include opening the Purple Line BRT and completing 40-mile network BRT service, opening our first mobility hub in downtown Schenectady, merging Greater Glens Falls Transit into CDTA. We are now a six-county operation. Uh, continued development of our uni universal access agreement, which is fueling our ridership and customer revenue increases and agreeing to a four-year contract with the Amalgamated uh, Transit Union Local 1321. The agreement provided increased wages and a strong pension plan for the 650 employees covered by it. Um, the ne next meeting of the committee will be on Wednesday, June 12th, unless there's any further comments or questions. Seeing none, uh, we'll... Uh, Proceed to the performance monitoring audit committee, and Peter will provide that to the board. Peter. Thank you. I usually don't get such a gracious uh, introduction from <laughs> our chair that's absent. Uh, um, the, the performance monitoring and audit committee met uh, uh, at noon on May 22nd here, um, and we have a couple things pretty, pretty long uh, agenda today. We'll, I'll walk through it by uh, topic. With respect to the audit committee, uh, Seth Hennard from Lumsden and McCormick presented the draft year-end audit for FY fiscal year 2024. We received a clean opinion with no findings or weaknesses. This is what we want for sure. Um, Lumsden reviewed the, their approach along with required communications and balance sheet. Their presentation is included in your packets. And now we need a motion to approve the draft fiscal year uh, 2024 financial statements and compliance summary prepared by that group. All right. Uh, do we have a motion for resolution 11 to approve the draft financial and compliance report? Thanks, Denise. I'll second. So, thanks, Jackie. Um, are there any other comments or questions regarding? No, just good work. Good work all the way around. Um, what you know goes unnoticed is the work of the staff that, that you know keeps these results being so positive uh, year after year. You know, Lumsden is here. We focus on Lumsden, and you know, basically they're just looking at stuff. It's like, right? the finance team, and, uh, others who you don't see who, who every day you know, make sure that we do what we're supposed to do um, in a manner that is you know, fully compliant. I worry about a lot of things. Uh, I, I sell them. Rest assured that the organization financially is in great hands. Right. And I can say just from my experience that we live for those, these types of, uh, so um, great job, great job. On the consent agenda items, uh, we issued a request for proposals for broker service for commercial insurance and employee benefit services. Yeah, oh, sorry, kind of before we, yeah. All those in Catch. favor of approving the uh, compliance report, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any <laughs> fast, I know. You're going too fast. I am so jacked. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a five-page report over here. He's like, we got to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's not, they have a strictly business. So sure. Strictly business. All right. Well, the motion is, resolution is approved unanimously. unanimously <laughs> and I will uh, proceed to the next item. Peter. Okay, thank you. Yes. <laughs> I'll wait for the cue. Has anyone ever seen okay. Dave that? I do like that. I'm trying to be, I'm, Jamie's not here, so I'm trying to give him the hard time. Jamie usually gives him. I figured. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm a little freer today. I don't know. <laughs> By the way, he asked for a full report. <laughs> Uh, we issued an RFP for uh, um, broker services for commercial insurance and employee benefit services, and we received four proposals, and staff uh, recommends the following awards. For commercial insurance to go to NFP, who is the incumbent, incumbent, and employee benefit services to Gallagher. Both brokers have strong presence in the region, and the references are excellent. Um, so we need a motion to award a three-year contract 
with a two-year option to NFP of New York, New York, for a minimum value of three hundred fifteen thousand um, dollars, and a three-year contract with two uh, option years to Gallagher of Latham for a minimum value of one hundred ninety-five thousand. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve? Oh. Thanks, Dave. And do we have Jackie? Jackie, thank you. I'll second. Yeah. yeah, just a quick yeah. note. You know, we talked about this at length in the committee. Uh, taking a little bit of a chance, uh, making a change for the first time in, in a long time. Uh, NFP has um, formalized, actually, mm -hmm. and handled both sides of this business for us. We think the time is right. Uh, to make this change, Gallagher offers us some interesting um, and new ways to look at, you know, uh, our, our, our family of employee benefits, most notably uh, health insurance. So um, I, I think this is a, uh, it's good risk. It's, it's, it's um, you know, we're not, we're not changing health care providers or anything of the sort, but just really ways maybe for us to communicate better with our employees and for them to communicate better with us and so, you know, what, what they have available. This is a step in the right direction. Yeah. Okay. Um, all those in favor of resolution 12, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, the resolution is approved unanimously. Peter. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a sole source purchase is recommended to order 60 new driver barriers to replace worn out barriers installed during the pandemic. The cost is reasonable, less than 1% price increase from the original purchase. Uh, related to this procurement is the purchase of latches to allow operators to lock the barrier to improve the security of the bus operator compartment. We will order latches for all buses. Uh, we, need to, uh, we need a motion to award a contract to purchase barriers to Transit Guard of Pagosa Springs, Colorado for an amount not to exceed $115,460. So yes, thanks, Jackie. Yes. Thanks, Denise, on the second. Um, from what I understand, these the cost of these barriers is pretty consistent with the ones we purchased a few yeah, years ago. Change much. Yeah. Just two, two things we're doing here. We need 60 barriers to replace ones that are old and scratched and, and worn. But the, really, the, the, the story behind the story is the purchase of the uh, locking device. You know, right now, uh, those are, they close, it's a magnetized system. Anybody can you know, pull that open. And unfortunately, uh, people do. And we wanna further secure the safety of our operators and this will help. This is a, a step towards probably a permanent type of, uh, when bus is ordered, it will be ordered. Never thought I'd see the day, never thought I'd be the one supporting it. Times have changed, uh, for sure. Times have changed. I think we owe it to our operators to keep them as safe as possible. I had a question. Is that an adequate number at this time that we need? Yeah, the 60s is straight. You know, we know how many are uh, in need of replacement. You're probably going to see similar types of procurement in the next you know, 12, 15 months. Are we adding the locks to our is that a retrofit thing we're doing, or is my what, what was that? The device. I, 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 I thought it was mentioned in the committee meeting, but maybe I misheard. Are we retrofitting the existing barriers with the locks, though? All, all barriers on all of our uh, revenue vehicles will have this lock. All right. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Go through and Thank you, Dave. Change them out. All right, all those uh, in favor of purchasing driver barriers from Transit Guard of Pagosa Springs, Colorado for an amount not to exceed $115,460, say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? The resolution is approved unanimously. Um, as part of our fleet replacement program, we need to replace two trolleys. We have a contract with Hometown Trolley, and the cost is the same as last year. Delivery, delivery will be in February 2025. So we need a motion to approve the purchase of two trolleys from Hometown Trolley of Brandon, Wisconsin, for a total price of $404,534. Do we have a, a motion to approve? Thanks, Dave. Okay. 
Thanks, Jackie. Um, any other comments or questions for the resolution? All those in favor of purchasing the two trolleys from Hometown Manufacturing of Cranton, Wisconsin, for an amount not to exceed four hundred four thousand five hundred thirty-four dollars, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? That resolution is approved unanimously. Peter, like the last item, we have a contract with Coach and Equipment to purchase paratransit vehicles, there is a 5% increase uh, from last year. Staff recommends the purchase of four vehicles for STAR. They're equipped with wheelchair lifts, cameras, and air purification systems. Delivery is expected April 2025. We need a motion to approve the purchase of four vehicles for coach and equipment of Penyan, New York, for a total price of $570,104. Thanks, Denise. Do we have a second? Thanks, Georgie. Any other comments or questions regarding those? Seeing none, all of those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Resolution is approved. Recently, the market price for diesel fuel dropped, making it attractive to lock in long term fuel contracts. We were able to lock in pricing of $2.69 per gallon. A six cent decrease from the contract that expires in August 2025. And we need a motion to award a one year contract for diesel fuel to take effect September 1st, 2025, to Moravido Energy Products of Binghamton, New York, for minimum value of $6.2 million. Do we have a motion to approve a contract for diesel fuel on Moravido Energy? Thanks, Jackie. Second. Thanks, Dave. A second. Um, from what I noticed from previous, it looks like the price has been coming down consistently over the past few yeah, years I mean, or so. This is interesting, right? So it, it, it dropped about, well, from the time we started really watching, seven or eight cents. But from the time we froze, it then started to pop back up again. You know, we've had, in, in my history here, Big swings. I wouldn't call this a big swing. This is a small swing. Remember, we're purchasing out now. You know, we're out two years. So what we're really doing here, I would, you know, this is stability. We're locking it in uh, at a price which it, it might end up going lower. Who knows? Maybe by a few cents. But we know now for the next couple of years we're going to have prices going down. And we've done this from time to time. Um, I'd say we win more often than we lose. This strategy. It's a great, it's a great modification to our purchasing process. I think it serves us well. Yeah. And they've, they've been a great partner Robert over was, the years. Yeah. Whatever we do, mm -hmm. whatever we do, don't change. Mm -hmm. They are fabulous. For those of you that have history here, you'll remember we changed one time. Uh, we quickly scurried back to Rob. They're, they're a really great one. They usually call us. That's, that's, that's great. That's how great the company yeah. is. Oh, so at this time, we just need a motion to approve a contract for diesel fuel to Morocco Energy products. Thank you, Peter. Second. Second. Thanks, George. Second. Thank you, Jackie, as well. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Resolution is approved. All right. Great. Uh, move on to ad administrative discussion items. Amanda Avery, our resident legal and risk scholar, uh, provide a quarterly review of the risk management and workers' compensation self-insurance accounts. The committee determined that both accounts are adequate at this time. Mike Collins, the monthly management report. Mike Collins provided the monthly management report for April. MRT had a slow start to the year as we were under budget by 30%. Customer fares and rail station revenues continued to be strong and were over budget by 3% and 10% respectively. Wages were 3% over budget due to annual payout of attendance bonuses. Workers' compensation expenses were 8% under budget. And other benefits, primarily pension, was 12% under budget. We are in a satisfactory position. I don't know if there was any comments. Good. 
Uh, and then the monthly non-financial, the performance report. Chris Desney uh, gave the non-financial report for April. Fixed route ridership was up 21% for the month. Star ridership is up 9% this month. System-wide on-time performance is at 72%. Star on-time performance was at 78%. We missed 0.5% of all scheduled trips. Preventable accidents were at 21, and non-preventable accidents were at 17. And the next meeting of the committee is scheduled for June 9th. Actually is going to be rescheduled. We've got to figure that out. That is a holiday. Uh, at 110 Waterbleed Avenue or on Microsoft Teams. Thanks. Yes. And thank you for yes. monitoring. Thank you. I appreciate I'm it. sure Jamie <laughs> might want to speak with you. <laughs> I, I fear the, the feedback. That's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of questions. I, I know. know. I, I, I this know. is my favorite, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. Yes. Thank you, Peter. Great. Um, Next up is the Community and Stakeholder Relations Committee, and Dave Stackrow will provide that to us. Dave. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Community and Stakeholder Relations Committee met on May 23rd at 11.15 a.m., both here and on Microsoft Teams. Uh, the committee heard reports on our Flex service, and also the monthly earned media and community engagement report was provided. John Scherzer gave an update on our Flex On Demand service, the service which began in January 2020, currently operates 20 vehicles in Colony, Gilderland, Latham, and Southern Saratoga County. Over the last four years, ridership has increased to 100,000 trips annually. We have made several adjustments to make the Flex service more accessible and convenient for customers. In September 2023, Flex expanded to Stillwater, increasing the service area in Saratoga County. Customers now enjoy the ease of booking trips directly through our Navigator app. In January 2024, Flex Plus debuted, connecting people from the Joseph L. Bruno Rail Station to downtown Albany. Looking ahead as part of our work to update our transit development plan, we will look to expand Flex into other areas that make sense and help to connect customers to our existing route network. Jamie Caslow provided the Earn Media and Community Relations Report. Last month, we earned 20 placements in television, newspaper, and radio with an estimated value of $20,000. Stories included the announcement of our two new mobility hubs that will be built in Troy and near St. Peter's Hospital, an interview during National Infrastructure Week to talk about some of our capital projects and the impacts they will have on our region, a new bus stop at Wellness Way in Latham, and service for the annual Tulip Festival weekend. We participated in a number of community events, including a Cohoes High School birthday event, the 70th anniversary of the Waterville Little League, Saratoga Children's Museum Big Truck Day, and we were proud to win Most Humorous T-shirt for the CDPHP Workforce Challenge. We continue to see increases in followers across our social media channels. We talked about what people find interesting. A top post was a hiring ad that we created to attract people to work at CDTA and where you can take CDTA on the weekends if you're looking for something fun to do. Looking ahead, we will hold a groundbreaking ceremony for our Liberty Square Mobility Hub in Troy, kick off trolley service in Saratoga to help move people during the Belmont Stakes. <laughs> that was warranted. <laughs> yeah. Let's take the other one. Yeah. And, and welcome the Nature Bus back to Schenectady on July 6th. Our next meeting of the committee will be on Tuesday, June 20th at 11.15 a.m. Any questions? Comments? <laughs> Am I replaced? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. Hill Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 All right. All that. I know. Yeah. Next up is the uh, Strategic and Operational Planning Committee report. Uh, the committee met last Thursday, May 23rd. We had two administrative discussion items, first being our transit development plan update. Uh, Chris Desney provided an update of the advancement of our new uh, transit development plan, TDP. 
The TDP is an enabler to the strategic plan and seeks to enhance the quality of life for capital region residents by pursuing mobility options, efficient use of public space, uh, walkability, accessibility, equity, economic development, and a positive impact on the environment. Phase one work began last year, and we have since completed in-reach and outreach activities with many different stakeholder groups to get a sense of what services are important to them. We also completed a profile analysis for each route in the system. We discussed the strategic and operating principles to achieve our goals. There are nine identified service concepts, several of which were discussed in detail. Those include enhancing a capital priority network and building a frequent network to connect neighborhood routes to high frequency corridors. Concepts also include weighing deviations versus speed, splitting routes, and adjusting stop spacing. We will be showing concepts for public input as part of phase two work over the summer. Following that, we will develop a draft of the TDP document and in advance a public education campaign in the fall. Second item was the West facility update. CARM provided an update on advancing the development of a West facility. We have completed a phase one environmental review and an independent appraisal. We will be moving forward with next steps, which include a more detailed review of existing leases and starting the framework for a purchase agreement. <coughs> The uh, next meeting of the committee will be June 20th, 12 p.m. here at 110 Water Valida for PM Microsoft Teams. And that concludes my report unless there's any comments or questions. Seeing none, uh, we will move on to the Chief Executive Officer's report. I don't know if I can top those committee reports. Um, but, um, you know, so I... I I spent a lot of time thinking about what, what is the message every month. Sometimes it's, it's tough to come up with a different message. You know, it's different than the month before or the same month last year. I sometimes find myself saying the same thing at different times of the year. But I was struck by the, um, the discussion at Dave's committee, on community and stakeholder relations. And I realized that we... Um, you know, we set out 15 years ago when I started this, this thing um, to be different, uh, you know, to be an innovator, to, to, but most importantly, to be respected. Everybody liked us uh, as a company. We were well run. You know, we, we weren't in the newspapers. Uh, we weren't. You know, we didn't have board members arguing with each other or being parochial about you know their their, their decision making. Um, People stealing money. You read about all these things at different, either different transit systems or different public sector entities. We were none of that, but we wanted to be different. You know, something was missing. Uh, we we weren't at the table um, for economic development discussions, community initiatives. Uh, we got called sort of only when they needed us, or when often too late. Yeah, yeah and oftentimes we couldn't help. We wanted yeah. to help. We couldn't. Um, and we talked about that, and we, we, we talked about that in committee, and really the committee itself, forming the committee. Those of you that were here for some time remember, we tried it once or twice, it, it lived in planning for a while, planning, it, it, just, it just didn't work. But when we, we got the committee going is when we, I think, were able to really um, put fuel on this motor that has become you know, who we are today. Um, and who we are today really is a product of, of that work. Certainly, you know, the three BRTs have really changed uh, who we are and what we do. Uh, it really has buffeted us from <clears throat> any dips in ridership, you know, because if you look at those three BRT corridors, there's 60% of our ridership now. Uh, they're outstanding. And, and the universal access program that we talk about over and over again, I remember the first one. You know, the first one was was a, a fraction of what we do at New Albany, and it happened concurrently with RPI. And I remember, I remember being at RPI with Dennis Fitzgerald. This goes back more than fifteen years. This goes back like twenty-five years. 
you know, the administration, the students, I mean, they tore us apart because they had a private company that did that. Why would, why do we want to ride public buses? We convinced them. And so, you know, those two little universal access agreements are now 50. There are 50 universal access agreements you know, that generate, you know, depending on when you look at the numbers, seven or eight million dollars in customer revenue. That's what's fueling. <coughs> you know, last year was our highest um, customer revenue intake in the history of the company. Um, but, but the board committee really, again, was, the, I think, the game changer. Um, you know, the reports that, that Jamie gives you, um, I think, are understated. You know, $20,000 for all that. If you, what, what she's trying to show you is if you had to go out and buy that amount of airtime, and you know, air our commercials, that's what it would cost you. I think those, are, those estimates are way low. I think, um, I just don't think you would be able to get that. But I'm also struck by something I was, I remember I think I got this in college, you know, um, that you, you can't pay for some of that. You know, the cost is, is just in a different league. Um, you know, we talked about mobility hubs. I remember Chris going on a study mission trip, you know, five years ago, coming back, talking about this in a, a board workshop. And we, we nodded and said, yeah, I'm going to Europe. I'm, it'll never happen here. Well, not only is there one, but there's going to be three in, in short order. Um, but again, it's all that community that community um, drive. You, you know, we're beyond respected now. We're a shining light in the community. CDTA is a shining light. So we have to do everything we can now to just keep shining that light, make sure it burns. It burns brighter. And that's, that's tough work. Um, and everybody in the room contributes to that. You know, I, the activity report is three pages this month, but it could be six pages if I put in what everybody else is doing. <clears throat> you know, just stuff that I touch. Uh, if you put it what everybody else touches, it's you know, six pages. And that's not easy work. You know, it's not easy work. Everybody thinks, well, you know, you just go into a chamber thing and you have a couple of drinks and you go home. Well, you, know, you usually talk to 20 people. And it's always about you know, what we're doing. How can we help? Um, you know, the summer, the seasonal services. I'm looking through the list of seasonal services. It used to be this much. It's now this much. <clears throat> we're, we're in the trolley business now, if you haven't figured that out. Um, you know, half of what Greater Glens Falls does is trolleys. So I expect that you're going to see us come up with some new twist to the trolley thing because there's, there's just so many of them. You know, Dave's happy to have more vehicles to work on. Uh, <laughs> and the TDP, you know, the TDP is not a new thing. It's an old thing. But we'll make it new. It, when it's done, it will have a different spin on the service network and how it's designed and what it's you know what it's targeting for. You know, what are we trying to achieve? Um, this is actually the third iteration of the TDP. And if you can remember, you know, 15, 20 years ago when we did the first one, we, we literally blew up the you know, we blew it up, rebuilt it, um, and, and what you have today is pretty solid. Now requires oh, a lot of tweaks here and there. You know, maybe they work in flex, and that's what you're going to get out of the TDP. But what struck me is that discussion in, in, in the committee. Um, it really was the, the turning point, I think, to help us be really external in, in how we think about things. And we really do think about the community. I'll give you a sort of half a list of things that we do you know, to, to help firefighters, help law enforcement help senior citizens. You know, I'm a, I'm a sucker. If a nun or a priest calls, you know, what do you need? Um, they seem to call more and more and more. I mean, the word's out. If you call CDTA, they will try to help you. Do we get ev back everything we give? I don't know. I'd rather give more than I get. Um, but I think that's kind of where we are right now. It's, Shining Star is not, I'm not exaggerating. All good. You know, Thanks for the time. Yes. Hey, Tom, uh, I, for those who didn't attend, how was the, or, or Jamie, how was the event up in uh, Lake George, I think it was, you guys had? Uh, typical Lake George. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fine. It was a lot of you know, the tourism community, but you know, we, we had uh, Mayor Perry, who, if you don't know, Mayor Perry replaced 
Mayor Blaze. Mayor Blaze was the longest serving mayor, maybe in the history of the world, yeah. right? 50, <laughs> 50 plus years. So it was fine, but you know, here's a guy he's replacing a 50 year guy. Um, it, it was fine. Um, it's, it's, it's an interesting community. We, we certainly don't know the ins and outs. Yet. We're, we're learning. We're learning. It was, it was fine. It was fine. Had a lot of staff people think it's right. We had a beautiful day up there. It's the first media event I remember speaking at with waves crashing behind me. Who are those? Yeah. Really cool. There's a bunch of ocean front here. That's it for me. Yeah. All right. Are there any other board member comments? Before we go on to the next item. Um, no? Okay. Um, so now we just need a motion to go into executive session to discuss a uh, litigation matter. It'll be short. We have a motion. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Okay. Thanks, Peter. Okay. You probably won't be able to find it. Okay. All right. Um, so we are now out of executive session. It is 1244. Um, I do have uh, resolution 17 uh, for the board to consider. Um, the authority hereby authorizes the settlement of claim L21-43953. Subject to execution of the associated documents in compliance here therewith. Authority staff is hereby authorized to execute all required documentation. The authority hereby authorizes and approves the claim settlement amount of $275,000. This resolution shall take effect immediately. May I have a motion? Yes, Dave. Thank Thank you. you. Thanks, Denise. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The resolution is approved. Uh, the next uh, meeting of the board will be June 26, uh, 12 p.m. here in the boardroom at 110 Water Balloon Ave. And now I seek a motion to adjourn the meeting. Peter, thank you. I have a second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All right. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.